Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 most controversial Netflix originals. Sorry about that, by the way. For this list, we'll be looking at original Netflix movies, series, and specials that sparked intense pop culture discussions. Because of this, we're issuing a minor spoiler warning. What Netflix originals do you find uniquely divisive? Join the discussion in the comments. Number 20, Big Mouth. Go away. You are not real. You're just some hormone monster my brain created. Despite Big Mouth's acclaim and popularity, not everyone enjoys its candor about the awkwardness of puberty. The raunchy jokes, visuals, and situations would be scandalous if the show was all about grown-ups. With kids at the center, many accuse it of focusing too heavily on adolescent sexuality. On the other hand, some have complained about the show's shortcomings in casting white actors to play diverse characters. Co-creator and star Nick Kroll has acknowledged issues with casting. At the same time, he holds Big Mouth to a high standard of unflinching honesty about how adolescents come to terms with themselves. At least everyone can agree Big Mouth isn't a cartoon for kids. I can't believe I'm wearing a 9-11 towel as a diaper and I wore white shorts on the worst day in history to wear white shorts. Number 19, The Goop Lab. And really as a culture, we're hungry for something else and for something to, to help us heal. Gwyneth Paltrow's brand Goop has been widely criticized for questionable products and services based in pseudoscience. Netflix took a share of that criticism by giving Paltrow a platform with The Goop Lab. The docu-series promoted things like psychic therapies, bee stings to treat injuries, and cold temperatures and hallucinogens to treat mental illness. And many felt it was a big commercial for Goop's expensive and sometimes absurd products. Netflix was at least somewhat conscious of potential issues. At the start of each episode, there was a disclaimer advising viewers to take the show's medical advice with a grain of salt. The Goop Lab may mean well by promoting women's health, but many say it mostly just promoted Paltrow's personal brand. I've definitely felt like more of an openness uh -huh. and hopefully letting people in. Yes. <laughs> Number 18, The OA. You're Perry Johnson, aren't you? I'm The OA. With its supernatural plot and teenage characters, this series has more than a few similarities to Stranger Things. However, it wasn't the mystery and the intrigue that kept people talking, but rather the shocking finale. Britt Marling stars as Prairie Johnson, aka The OA, a blind woman that disappears for seven years and then returns with a new perspective, along with her sight. <laughs> She performs something called The Movements, a type of dance that can supposedly open an interdimensional portal. In the season one finale, a shooter goes to menace a real-life location that felt all too real for some. He's ultimately distracted by, yes, The Movements. Some found the episode distasteful for blending real-life tragic topics with a sci-fi premise. Number 17, Sense8. You're coming home with me. When this science fiction series premiered, many people tuned in for the Wachowskis' distinct visual style. To their credit, they explore many societal issues in season one, with the most important being human connections. By episode six, four of the characters share an erotic moment. <laughs> It was very graphic and extremely sensual. This marked a turning point where some critics felt the adult content became too much of a focus for the show. There was another controversy when the show's cancellation was abruptly announced in between seasons. Fortunately for fans, a special was greenlit to help wrap up as much as the writers could. Number 16. The First Temptation of Christ. Netflix doesn't just take risks on American productions. The Brazilian comedy troupe Porta dos Fundos imagined if Jesus learned about his divine parentage at his 30th birthday party. It's a touchy satirical subject to begin with. However, the first temptation of Christ drew more ire when its suggestion that Jesus had a boyfriend. The special quickly became a scandal in Brazil and throughout the Christian world. 
After petitions and an attack on the production company's office, a judge ordered Netflix to remove the title from the Brazilian platform. He was overruled by the Supreme Federal Courts in defense of freedom of expression. Nonetheless, Netflix has since made its own choice to remove The First Temptation of Christ. Number 15. Marvel's Iron Fist When Netflix cast Finn Jones for this Marvel Comics adaptation, the internet had a polarizing reaction. A vocal portion of viewers felt like casting a white actor to play a character whose life revolved around kung fu felt inappropriate. On the other hand, others defended the casting because it reflected the original comic book character. Ironically, both sides came together over the unified opinion that the show was disappointing. The biggest controversy people remember about Iron Fist is that the dialogue, characters, and overall plot fell short. Critics also felt Jones didn't do well in the fight scenes either. In the end, the casting of Iron Fist was the least of the show's problems. Number 14. Dahmer. Monster. The Jeffrey Dahmer Story. The entire building is a crime scene. There's toxic chemicals in here that could be a hazard. Wait. How many did you find? Our culture's rampant obsession with true crime doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon. Despite there being no shortage of retellings of Jeffrey Dahmer's story, this Netflix series felt the need to rehash his tale. While the show was widely watched, many people have taken issue with how the subject matter was handled and represented, particularly the families of Dahmer's victims. Netflix also insensitively decided to tag the series as LGBTQ, labeling this horrific true story of the murders of queer men alongside programs that have positive representation and uplifting messages for the community. Community. They ultimately removed the tag, but it doesn't change the fact that this series failed to do anything but glamorize atrocious crimes. And I'd drug them, and then I'd take them downstairs to the fruit cellar, and then I'd strangle them once they were unconscious. Number 13. Amy Schumer, The Leather Special For many viewers, this stand-up special didn't feature Amy Schumer at her best. Imagine you take your clothes off in front of someone for the first time and they're just like, damn, you look mad brave right now. Some found the crude brand of humor to be too offensive. According to various reports, a coordinated effort was made to lower the Netflix original's rating. That practice resulted in a lengthy Instagram reaction from Schumer herself. It's the saddest shelf in the world. And I've been to the Anne Frank house. Outside the external controversy, a portion of her gags were poorly received. Detractors claim that Schumer's raunchy jokes wore thin after the half-hour mark. Despite some critical acclaim, the leather special ultimately made headlines for its poor ratings and divisive content. Number 12. Messiah It lasted a record 43 days, a sandstorm of biblical proportions covering the city of Damascus in a blanket of dust. Critics were split by Messiah, a thriller series about the rise of Christ figure al Musi. Certain Muslim viewers in particular were turned off before the show even premiered. And that wasn't just because of the sensitive religious and political themes. The name al Musi has a double meaning in Arabic referring to both the Messiah and the deceitful Antichrist figure, Dajjal. Giving the show's main character that name instantly caused people to have strong reactions before seeing a minute of the show. Some were just offended by the idea of a series where the protagonist was possibly the Antichrist. However, that mystery remains unsolved because the Messiah was canceled after only one season due to a bad reception. And that's what makes people like you dangerous. Number 11. Death Note Based on a massively popular Japanese manga series, this Netflix original made news for being entirely Americanized. Directed by noted horror Artur Adam Wingard, Death Note is based in Seattle and stars Nat Wolf not as Light Yagami, but rather as Light Turner. As a whole, critics picked apart the filmmaking. Longtime Death Note fans expressed their displeasure about the casting and lack of Asian actors. Kira? What does that mean? It actually means light in Russian and Celtic. According to many, it's another case of whitewashing that could have easily been avoided with a more thoughtful approach. 
The nearly pitch-perfect castings and adaptations like Cowboy Bebop suggest Netflix took the feedback from Death Note. Number 10. Okja At the 2017 Cannes Film Festival, everybody was talking about director Bong Joon-ho and his Super Pig. But it wasn't necessarily the plot that made headlines. Okja was one of two Netflix films to premiere at Cannes. At the time, many were offended that the Netflix original didn't have an official theatrical release date. Additionally, South Korea's three largest movie chains refused to screen Okja because of Netflix's plan to release it online. Some movie fans also argued that Netflix could potentially limit their director's visions. However, Bong Joon-ho reported that the shooting format was his only restriction. Given the amount of original films that the streamer has released in the years since, Netflix is likely to keep debuting movies with this model. Number 9. Atypical You're so easy to boss around. I don't care what happens to my dead brain. I mean, it's either I give it to Julia or maggots eat it. If mom wants maggots to eat it, that's fine. For four seasons, Atypical won both acclaim and criticism for its representation of an autistic individual. Teenager Sam Gardner's journey to become more independent was well received. But this celebration of what people with ASD are capable of was undermined by the production's lack of autistic creators and consultants. The fact that Sam's actor was neurotypical immediately raised eyebrows. Additionally, critics felt the lead actor's portrayal was too stereotypical. Although autistic actors and creatives were brought in for later seasons, it wasn't enough to curb all the negative backlash. While Atypical was technically a successful show, it likely wouldn't do as well if it were released today. Do you like movies? Yes. I love them. Do you have any fears or phobias? Nope. What are your favorite winter sports? Number 8. Dave Chappelle, The Closer I've gone too far. I've said too much. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, I'm very worried about it. I'm not even joking. Despite comedian Dave Chappelle's renown, he's been criticized in the past for his jokes about the transgender community. He addressed the controversy head-on in the Netflix special, The Closer. However, some critics felt that Chappelle made matters worse by questioning transgender identities and saying he supported the TERF movement. His story about a trans friend who took her own life was also considered exploitative. Netflix CEO Ted Sarandos defended Chappelle's free speech against massive backlash. Following his statements, a trans employee resource group within the company staged a walkout. The divisive nature of the special and the protests didn't affect Netflix's ongoing relationship with Chappelle. Mm -mm. No, I'm not going to feel that way at all. I'm going to feel very uncomfortable. Number 7. To the Bone before this film was released, many people were bothered by the trailer and its graphic visuals. Lily Collins starred as a young woman battling with anorexia. Prior to this point, the actress had actually been on record about her own past with disordered eating. Collins reportedly accepted the role to spread awareness. And we're by no means starting the conversation, we're just heightening it and igniting it. While critics have praised her performance, along with the film itself, others have feared To the Bone could have a negative influence on people. One major concern was that the film included too much detail. You want to help people? What are you, a doctor now? As a result, some were worried it could encourage people to follow and repeat disordered eating behavior. Number 6. Insatiable I went on my first diet at just 8 years old. For as long as I can remember, I've been hungry. Insatiable, really. Audiences didn't have much of an appetite for the dark comedy Insatiable. The story revolved on a formerly overweight teen's scheme to exact revenge against those who tormented her. Throughout the show, jokes about everything from crimes against young people to the constant fat shaming rubbed people the wrong way. Even before the show premiered, a petition calling for its cancellation gained more than 100,000 signatures. Instead, Netflix gave it a second season. Some felt that it took this opportunity to become more respectful in its commentary. The audience response was nonetheless negative enough to finish off insatiable. It gets better. I promise. Trust me, skinny is magic. Number 5. Making a Murderer We filed Stephen Avery's lawsuit about a year after the DNA had come through. 
Just the title alone makes this Netflix original controversial. Making a Murderer focuses on Stephen Avery, a man that served 18 years in prison for assault and attempted murder. After he was released because of DNA evidence, he was once again found guilty of homicide in 2007. The 10 part series covers various aspects of Avery's legal troubles, including his 2007 conviction for murder. Mm, I won't put nothing past the county. Although the show covered a wide scope, commenters suggested that the series had been shaped to make its subject look better. A certain section of viewers even pushed to have Avery pardoned by the president. By the time the last episode aired, there was a lot of debate about how controversial crime documentaries should be presented. Number 4. Dear White People What are you? When Netflix released the first trailer for Justin Simeon's series, it rubbed some people the wrong way. The YouTube clip actually had more dislikes than likes. Even so, Dear White People is still rated fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Critics have praised the series for its blunt yet insightful approach to racial issues. Please take the show! Detractors claim that the show was racist towards white viewers. Despite the controversy, the show ran for four successful seasons before its conclusion, and it was never afraid to tackle controversial subjects or sensitive issues during its run. We need to come together at times like this. Are you a white male? Why? Race is a social construct. I'll take that as a yes. If Dear White People meant to get people talking about modern racial politics, it definitely succeeded. Number 3. Blonde I, I read the script. The whole script. It's, um, such a strange, disturbing story. Dealing with the trauma behind legendary Hollywood beauty Marilyn Monroe is a challenging prospect. While there was great anticipation for Andrew Dominic's Blonde, it received polarized reviews. Anna de Armas certainly won universal praise for her performance. However, Dominic was accused of exploiting and over-exaggerating Monroe's tragedies. Critics took umbrage at the dramatic license with her relationships. The way the film handled a disputed abortion Monroe had was especially lambasted. On the other hand, some found the story to be a dark and moving portrait of the icon's life. Whether viewers believe the movie did Monroe a service or yet another injustice, Blonde has inspired as much debate as its subject's legacy. Number 2. 365 Days, This Day, and The Next 365 Days. <laughs> <laughs> After Netflix surprised subscribers by acquiring Polish erotic thriller 365 Days, they stunned everyone by developing two sequels. The first film had romanticized a plot where a mobster forced a woman into staying with him for a year in the hope she would fall in love with him. Since the 365 Days acquisition once stood at the top of the Netflix charts, the streamer greenlit two sequels. The follow-ups didn't fare nearly as well. Rather than try to make up for the series' original sin, these movies made the love story look worse. Admittedly, the two Netflix originals were following the blueprint of the books, but they may have been less controversial if they had stayed away from the problematic hearts of the source material. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. 13 Reasons Why Based on Jay Asher's 2007 novel, this Netflix original addresses the effects of teenage torments. It's me, live and in stereo. More specifically, it's about a young woman who takes her own life. 13 Reasons Why has been accused of glorifying and sensationalizing its dark subject matter. And since the show was marketed as a teen drama, younger viewers were subjected to very sensitive topics. Numerous mental health organizations expressed concern about the film's narrative and graphic nature. After season one aired, the finale's depiction of a fatal act was notably censored. By the time 13 Reasons Why reached its fourth and final season, it had few supporters left. It will likely stand out as one of Netflix's most controversial dramas for years to come.